फोन और अ हाई एल्टीट्यूड प्लेटफॉर्म ऑल ऑफ ट्वेंटी थ्री किलोस बट इट कैन फ्लाई फॉर अप टू टेन आवर्स दिस वेरी स्पेशल प्लेन हैज बीन डेवलप्ड बाय द नेशनल एरो स्पेस लेबोरेटरीज अ पार्ट ऑफ द काउंसिल ऑफ साइंटिफिक एंड इंडस्ट्रियल रिसर्च ऑफ द सी एस आई आर a place which knows how to make things which fly a very special technology which can be used for both disaster management and also for spying when required i have with me dr venkata krishnan the person who is in charge of the making of this high altitude platform Thanks a lot for joining us, Dr. Venkata Krishnan. Most happy. Can you t- t- can you tell me what this little bird, lightweight bird, is all about? Okay. So basically, it's a, a UAV or unmanned aerial vehicle. So, <laughs> but it's a UAV with a difference. The difference being that, unlike a, a conventional UAV which flies in the atmosphere. this goes up to the stratosphere up to 20 kilometers altitude that's the final goal and it will be solar powered with a battery inside it to last through the night so what you are seeing here is a subscale version of the final uav which is only i say only but 12 meter wingspan the final one will have a 30 meter wingspan same as a a320 and these are extremely lightweight because it has to be all about endurance endurance and endurance and these are the solar panels which power the plane to be in flight yes yes so basically uh, here we carry no fuel on board so the sun produces uh, solar uh, radiation which impinges on the solar panels and uh, get stored into the batteries which are all inside the wing oh and the batteries are also inside yes, the wing the batteries are inside the wing so okay. essentially it is a uh, it's an energy budget which we have to frugally manage like something like managing a household so budget. is it like a glider or why does it have propellers yes so it is a part glider a part powered glider why is it, do i say it's a glider because it has to have incredible uh, endurance uh, the final version has to be allowed for 90 days 90 days 90 days non stop and that too is limited by the cycle life of the battery like your cell phone batteries all batteries have a cycle life so uh, because of this it should glide for very long distances for each uh, uh, meter of height loss so it's a glider at the same time you don't want it to lose height so it has uh, these little propellers which push it forward now this very uh, aircraft has flown up to 7 and a half kilometers of altitude and uh, been aloft for 10 hours and 10 minutes and this 10 uh, hours this has been this aloft this particular aircraft and uh, the, and it has flown several flights there have been more than 35 flights with this aircraft alone we have others also like this and uh, this is as yet a subscale prototype now what is this airframe made of what is the, this the airframe has to be again extremely weight li- uh, light uh, uh, weight uh, in fact like you uh, pointed out this is only 23 kg with a 12 meter uh, wingspan so it is all made of carbon fiber which is extremely light and extremely strong now does this work autonomously or d- does one have to kind of manually control it okay since when we are looking for this kind of endurances a human pilot will experience fatigue so this bird is completely autonomous uh, as you can see in the videos it takes off autonomously climbs to its uh, desired altitude and goes to the location autonomously and comes back and lands autonomously it's even programmed to come back and land when the battery is low or there are problems or uh, as commanded by a human even now what else can this do you said one is disasters what can it do in disaster situation okay so basically the beauty of such aircraft and i'm talking of the final uh, version which flies at 20 kilometers in altitude is that it can be used for a variety of purposes one of them say disasters 
So in a disaster situation, you have, whether it's a flood or similar, you have complete loss of communication, you want to surveil the disaster area, you want to decide what is the best method, then such an aircraft can very easily relate to you information. It can also act as a mobile tower in the sky. Oh, meaning so, you put a, like a tower on the ground, you put a tower, tower. on top. Perfect. So basically, a 4G or 5G communicator, which is in the payload. Let us look at 6G now. Perfect. 5G is, yes. 5G uh, is there. Now, uh, what else? What are the? What is this being? Come this yes. side, sir. So, so, so basically, it is again a very con uh, conventional aircraft configuration, like you see in any. Uh, commercial aircraft which we fly in, you have a wing, a horizontal tail and a vertical tail. You have minimal control surfaces uh, designed to keep the bird in the air or maneuver it. So you have the usual what we call as the wings, the ailerons, the horizontal tail, the elevator, the vertical tail, the rudder and such. The whole thing made of carbon fiber. And, and, and you also have a camera yes, here. Yes, we, we have here a camera so that the, the person monitoring the flight can even see where the bird is pointing. And we have another camera in the payload bay which is looking vertically we, down. We, we, we will talk of that as we go along. Now, how many countries have developed this technology? Okay. So the first to do this was the Zephyr in the UK, which is now a part of Airbus and uh, they currently hold the world record for uh, a 64 day flight over uh, 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 the US, over the, uh, I think, uh, uh, Arizona desert, uh, chosen uh, also because of its good climatic conditions and uh, that there are no, not many flights there to disturb it. So uh, other than that, there are other countries like the UK, Germany, uh, New Zealand, uh, Japan, uh, uh, so which are also trying such uh, efforts. Uh, as of now, there's only one multi-day flying vehicle and that is the zip. Now, it can also be used to monitor what our enemies are doing. Now, where do you place your surveillance cameras? Is it in that small little hump there? Yes, so basically every aircraft of this kind has what's called a payload bay yeah. and the payload uh, and it has a ca payload capability. The payload capability of the full scale uh, uh, high altitude platform or HAP for short uh, of uh, CSIR NL will have a payload capability of 15 kgs and it is kept inside that little uh, hump like uh, and box. Can, does it have to be only a normal daylight optical camera or can it do day and night surveillance using synthetic aperture radar? Yes, there are a variety of payloads and visage. It can do electro-optic, that's uh, daylight, it can do uh, infrared, it can do synthetic aperture radar which can look through uh, foliage and such and cloud cover. So basically the the possibilities are limited only by the uh, limit of the payload which at 15 kgs is large enough for any of these. Now, why do you need to fly it at 20 kilometer altitude? Okay, so basically whenever you are talking of uh, 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 an aircraft which is incredibly persistent and long endurance, you want to be above the weather and we know that cumulonimbus clouds top out at most 16 kilometers. You have also have air traffic, which is up to 15 kilometers in most places. Finally, uh, you want, you know that the power required to fly increases with altitude, but the winds also decrease with altitude. At 20 to 23 kilometers, there's a sweet spot and that is where it is chosen. Beyond that, again, the winds start increasing. So now, is there, is, see, if you're monitoring enemy territory, you can also be targeted by ground-based missiles or airborne missiles. How easy a target okay. would a small bird like this because it does not have defenses. Okay, so, so the reason, the way to do this is, uh, in a way, it's like what I call peep into your neighbor's yard. So, uh, while staying within Indian territory, it is possible for this aircraft, because it is high up enough, to look at the area of interest, which is typically around the border. You never even need to uh, uh, 
travel into what is called contested airspace. You can be safe within your airspace and by sheer dint of the payloads which are there, look deep into enemy territory. Now, while we do this, how soon can we have the full-scale model? Okay, we have two very hostile neighbors which need to be constantly watched. Okay, uh, as far as the aircraft itself goes, the projection currently of uh, this uh, uh, pro uh, project deadline is sometime December of 2025 for the aircraft. Mind you, it will take a while for this to eventually get integrated into the national airspace system. The payloads are also being developed even as we speak. So, uh, I, I would say within a few years, we should uh, see some progress on that front. Thanks a lot for speaking to me, Dr. Venkata Krishnan, and explaining the concept of a high altitude platform. Okay. So, this is an aeroplane, but can do the job of a satellite. So, hangs in between an aeroplane and a satellite at a fraction of the cost, but do the job which a spy satellite can do. A very important technology which India is developing to protect its borders and also help if there are disaster situations. With camera person Govin in the hangar of the National Aerospace Laboratories in Bangalore, Pallav Bagla for NDTV.